people in the 1920s loved contests. These contests always tested your endurance. You had to outlast everyone else, such as the dance marathon. Here's a beach one. They danced until they dropped. The marathon dances had nurses standing by. Here's a couple of happy winners. One of the other fads was eating. Hope you had a big stomach. Like these girls in an oyster eating contest. Hot dogs and wieners were another popular eating contest. Pie eating contests. Even spaghetti eating contests. Then there were those who tried to outlast sitting on flagpoles, which I featured in a different video. Another popular one in the 20s was chewing gum contests. The chewing gum companies did great business. Almost everyone in the 20s chewed gum. One of my favorites was the kissing contest, who could kiss the longest. That's a real test of endurance and lip power. I also found a contest that was run by a newspaper for the most unusual dream, and they made a movie out of it. The winner of the dream also starred in the movie. So stay tuned to the end of this video and you'll get to see the 1924 movie of the winner's dream. It's now the time to read a newspaper together. We will be reading the actual articles for the May 13th, 1927 Seattle Post-Intelligencer from Seattle, Washington. Bananas, no, no. Irene Williams and Richard Steele, celebrated opera singers, blame songs like Yes, We Have No Bananas for the fact that America does not produce as many musical artists as the Latin countries where they say even the street urchins hum classical tunes at their play. Yes, we have no bananas. We have no bananas today. We bring beans and onions, the bananas, the scallions, and all kinds of fruit and say, We have an old-fashioned tomato, Long Island tomato. But yes, we have no bananas. We have no bananas today. 
Yes, we know you got a day of banana. We know you got a day of banana today. But one of me knows we got a new kind of the garlic. You want to use this garlic to make you stand apart from your friends. We got a 64,000 watermelon. We don't sell any, but the guy we buy them from, Mamma Mia, does he sell a watermelon? But uh, yes, we know you got a day of bananas. Hey, why you? We know you got a day of banana today. <laughs> $100 gold prize name contest closes Saturday. $100 in gold will be awarded for a name worthy of Malmo's widely used guard and fertilizer. Second prize $15, third prize $10, and other prizes. The winner who has the best name for this fertilizer from Malmo & Company will be announced on May 14, 1927. Zimbalist Happy as Violin Found, Chicago, May 12th. Efren Zimbalist today cabled from Suva in the Kiji Islands, where he is on tour. His congratulations to Rembert Wurlitzer and John R. Dubbs on the recovery of his $10,000 violin stolen in Los Angeles last month. Herman Schivel, 25, held as the thief when he tried to have the instrument appraised said he could not resist the temptation to own the instrument after he heard it played, according to police. Mix-up in Mix family denied. Mrs. Tom Mix, wife of the millionaire cowboy movie actor, today denied that she planned to obtain a divorce in France. To prove that she and her husband were on the best of terms, Mrs. Mix showed a letter received by airmail from Mix today. The missive was couched in endearing terms. In it, the film Cowpuncher deployed the fact that production of a picture kept him from accompanying her to Europe. The letter was closed with lots and lots of love. The report that Tom and I are about to be divorced is absurd. I am going to Europe to take special treatments for my health, Mrs. Mix said. Unlucky Friday. Oh, today, beware the hoodoo and the woe the day may bring. Though we feel the same as you do, omens do not mean a thing. But at coppers, don't make faces, it may bring you evil luck. And don't stoop to tie your laces right before a gravel truck. Flyers who in heavens hover or among the cloud at scoot shouldn't jump and then discover they forgot their parachute. Do not speed to reach the crossing when toward it freight trains race. That's about as bad as tossing trumps upon your partner's ace. Every student must take back to fair Harvard this fall a certificate that he has been vaccinated against smallpox. Some will hem and haw, others will object on various foolish grounds, but this is certain, fair Harvard will have no smallpox. Music is urged as a way to tune up home spirit. Good music in the home will keep youth out of the jazz palaces and at the fireside, Representative Henry H. Rathbone declared at the biannual banquet of the National Federation of Music Clubs. There should be music in every home, he said. Good music makes the home attractive and keeps both young and old from wandering into evil places with evil company. Music should never be allowed to become aristocratic. People should be encouraged to cultivate the beauty of the melody for themselves. Every village should have its band and every high school its orchestra. Question, why is the coldest water usually found in the faucet marked hot? Famous troublemakers. Oswald Filler, who conceived the idea of announcing future attractions in film houses. This has completely revolutionized movie entertainment. 
by the time they get through telling you what they are going to have next week, it's too late to see what they've got this week. If you're lucky, you may have time to read the fire regulations and hear the exit music. Speaking of movies, here's that movie clip I promised. But first, I want to know what you think of it. Please feel free to comment below. Presenting the movie of the winner of the Dream Contest from 1924.